section of this topic of atmosphere and weather. We're going to talk specifically about the global energy budget. Now we have been talking about local energy budgets and how we have the, the daytime energy budget versus the nighttime and the six components in day versus the four components at night. So we have a general idea of the, um, the things that are going on in the energy budget. Now we're going to take a look more at the global energy budget. And I want you to remember that the atmosphere is an open energy system and it receives energy from both the sun and the earth. So we have insulation coming in from the sun in short wave radiation. We also have long wave radiation coming off of the earth. Now typically this is a balanced system. If we take a look at the entire globe all at once, we're going to talk specifically about how the tropics versus the poles are not actually balanced. <coughs> so this is a picture of, uh, of the global energy budget. It looks similar, uh, semi-similar to the daytime, nighttime pictures that we have been looking at, but now you can sort of see exactly where all the energy is going. And your textbook goes into very specific detail about how much is going in, how much is coming out. I don't think you should be so concerned knowing exactly all of those numbers because again, it's different in different locations. However, I think you should know the two numbers that I have here for you. The first one is on the left. Oop, I do apologize for that. The first one is on the left right over here. Now this is uh, discussing about how 47% of insulation at the top of the atmosphere actually gets to Earth's surface. So imagine 100% of the insulation coming from the, Earth, uh, coming from the sun is not actually reaching Earth. Only about 47% in this particular picture, it's about 51. Um, only about that much energy actually reaches the Earth from the sun. Notice what's happening here. We have a little bit that gets absorbed by the water vapor, the dust, the carbon dioxide as it's entering, so those atmospheric gases. Um, in this picture, about 3% are is absorbed by clouds, so we have some energy, some radiation being absorbed by the clouds. We have some that gets scattered by the air, basically just gets back reflected right into the atmosphere off of these particles that are already in the air. We have some that's reflected by the clouds because of the albedo. Remember, albedo causes a lot of things to be reflected. So the clouds themselves already have a high albedo because they're of a light color and they're highly ref reflective. So they do um, send a lot of energy already back in there. And there's some energy that actually does get reflected directly off of the surface. So this is about half. <laughs> this picture says about half and your textbook talks about less than half of the energy actually reaches Earth's surface. Now, on the other side, how much energy is actually reflected or absorbed in, in by our ground itself? How much energy goes back into the atmosphere? So about 39% from the energy that leaves the Earth's surface actually makes it back. So um, if you count up all of this, all these numbers, this side equals 100, this side does not. And it's an interesting little thing because what happens is we do get some of these atmospheric gases, your greenhouse gases, absorbing some of the energy. So this side is actually not fully 100%, it's actually a little bit more. And that's an important part to consider when we talk about the next slide. But if you take a look at here, so this is the energy that's leaving Earth's ground, going back up into the surface, or going back up to the atmosphere. We have our latent heat, which is in the form of either evaporation or condensation, as we talked about. So we have about 23%. You have your sensible heat here, and that's basically your, your warm fronts, your cold fronts, your, the, the types of air that are moving into places. You have the net surface emission, so this is actually the amount of energy directly from the surface itself. Now notice some of it gets absorbed back into the greenhouse gases and we're going to talk about that. We have some of that energy then goes also back into the atmosphere. We have a net emission from those uh, greenhouse gases, or atmospheric gases. And your clouds also do emit some radiation back up into the atmosphere 
also back towards the ground, which isn't in this particular picture. So the heat gained by the atmosphere from the ground only is about 39% of incoming radiation. So they're almost equal, but not quite. So you can kind of see that all the energy that comes in from the sun or that leaves from the ground does not actually stay here. A lot of it gets emitted back into the atmosphere, gets reflected, gets scattered, gets absorbed by other things. So that's important to know. Where does the energy actually come from? Now, I did mention something about the greenhouse effect. So uh, first, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but first let's say that the atmosphere is heated mainly from the ground. So the energy that we feel as we're outside that's not necessarily energy coming directly from the sun. We actually feel a lot of that energy around us is coming from that long wave radiation from the ground. So most of that energy, most of our atmosphere from below gets heated from below. Now most incoming short wave radiation is let through. So think about the sun. Most of it is let through, about half. But some outgoing long wave radiation long wave radiation is actually trapped by your atmospheric gases. And these are your greenhouse gases. These are things like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other things that might happen to be in the air. Now this is known as the greenhouse effect. Now right now, don't get so concerned with the global warming. Global warming is much different than the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is something that we need to happen here on Earth. If we did not have the greenhouse effect, then we wouldn't be able to keep some of that, infra that uh, radiation inside the atmosphere. All that radiation would just go back out into space, and it wouldn't keep in the heat that we need. The greenhouse gas, or these greenhouse gases, actually keep the energy at a nice stable temperature. If we didn't have them, if these gases didn't absorb some of that radiation, then we would be a very cold planet at night. So these gases are needed. So don't get concerned or confused with the two terms, greenhouse effect and global warming. They are two completely separate things. Now, we'll talk about it more later when we talk about the human impact, but the greenhouse effect can lead to global warming. But we need the greenhouse effect right now to keep us stable. So we'll talk more about this when we get to the human impact in the section four. Now I mentioned earlier that the global energy budget is balanced, but I also mentioned that globally in specific places it really isn't very balanced. Now this is due, or we have variations in the amount of solar radiation due to two factors, and that's latitude and season. And this results in an imbalance in the global energy budget. So think of it overall, it is balanced. But if we look in specific places, it's actually imbalanced. Now if we take a look at the tropics, which here in Florida we're actually very close to, we have a positive budget. Now this basically means that we receive more energy. More energy or we get more energy from insulation than energy is lost during the evening. So we have a positive budget. Now here, we have a negative budget at the poles. Now this means that more energy is lost. Now this is due to both latitude and season. And in the next slide, I have a huge picture which shows you exactly what's going on. So just know in this one, this is very general. Remember Earth is tilted. We are tilted about 23.5 degrees. So if you imagine here, I'm going to draw this line here. I don't know how well you're going to see it. Okay, I'm on white. This is Earth's axis, kind of like right down here. So we're tilted, which means that this is our equator right here, this line. So everywhere along this line right here, all our sun's energy is getting directly hit right here. And it's right about the equator. Now notice our poles. Our poles do not receive direct sunlight. Theirs is more at an angle. So unfortunately they don't receive direct sunlight. So when the sun hits them, they actually receive sunlight at an angle, 
which is spread out over a longer area, which doesn't allow for the intensity that we have in the tropics. If you were to look at some of the pictures that you can see from um, places like North or South Pole, there are times where they have 24 hours of daylight or 24 hours of nighttime. So it's very important to understand that they don't receive the same amount of insulation that we do throughout the year. So this picture here demonstrates both latitudinal and seasonal variations. And um, I just want you to actually kind of let's stay right in this center at the moment. This is kind of um, what we would see around our equinoxes throughout the year. We have two equinoxes. I know I'm going a little off topic, but during the equinoxes, um, this is usually around your spring and fall. Um, so you have your, sp your vernal equinox in the spring, your autumnal equinox in the fall. And this is where we typically see about 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of sunlight. And it's because we're going through a shift. So while we are tilted all the time, actually we have, f our, our Earth is actually facing directly towards the sun at this particular time. So we have all our, our radiation coming in directly hitting us every place on Earth gets about 12 hours a day and 12 hours of night. Doesn't mean that they get the amount, same amount of sun radiation, it just means that the daylight hours are 12 and 12 and nighttime are 12. So um, this middle picture is showing you at an equinox we have the equator here. Now we have the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn. These are just places on Earth that gives us a nice latitude so we can um, kind of a, a reference point. They're about 23 and a half degrees um, latitude, north and south. Um, we have our Arctic Circle and we have our Antarctic Circle. So right now in this equinox, we're getting 12 hours a day, 12 hours of nighttime. So, um, and notice our sun radiation as I'm moving my picture. Notice the sun radiation is coming at the tropics directly, whereas at the poles, it's coming at an indirect angle. Now, if we take a look at different seasons, let's take a look at summer in the northern hemisphere. Now, this basically means that the sun, or uh, the tilt of the earth, is pointed towards the sun doesn't mean we're closer to the sun, it just means we're tilted towards the sun. So this gives you a reference point of kind of what it looks like during our summer solstice. So this is basically in June uh, 23rd, 24th, 22nd, right, right around there. This is what the Earth looks like. We're tilted directly towards the sun. Now notice our equator is our zero degree line. And notice where our sun's rays are. Now notice our poles, it's getting a lot of sunlight. It's getting about 24 hours of daylight. Notice our south pole, nothing. It's getting no daylight whatsoever. So as the Earth is spinning on its axis, as it's going through its rotation, our Arctic Circle is getting full sunlight. So at this time, it's getting a lot of, infra a lot of insulation. However, the south pole is getting none. So this causes a lot of coldness to go on in relative terms. This is cold down here and this is a little bit warmer up here. It's getting a little bit more. But think about the poles. They have a lot of snow. So think about the albedo going on when uh, the North Pole here is actually being tilted towards the sun. A lot of energy is still being reflected away. Now at the tropics, they're getting so much direct sunlight right now. So what's happening here, it's heating up. Our poles get cold, and then our tropics are very heat, uh, heated up. So this means that it, no matter what season we're in, whether we're in summer or we're in winter, the tropics are getting blasted with insulation. So we have a high, a positive budget at our poles. I'm sorry, at our equator. Now at our poles during the summertime and our wintertime, where the North Pole is pointed away from the sun. Now in this case our, our so, uh, the south pole is getting a lot more insulation. So they're in 24 hours. Look at our north pole versus our south pole. You can't really see that down there. So now they're getting 24. So again, they're being blasted with insulation, but it's highly reflective. So they're not actually getting a lot of in insulation at all. 
lots of insulation in the tropics, it's going to be very cold at the poles. So this is creating that imbalance here because of seasonal, because of our tilt, and because of latitudinal um, insulation happening because of that indirect sunlight that's coming in. How at the poles, they're very indirect. At this um, location in the equator, they're very, very direct. Now, just to point out where we are, remember, here we are. We're in Florida. We're right above the Tropic of Cancer. Here we are, right above there. So, and if you can kind of see us, we're right above here. So, we're kind of in the tropical areas. We're not really, but we're so, sort of subtropical. So, we get a lot more of the tropical type of weather than we do the poles. So, we're a lot warmer. We get blasted with that insulation. So that's why it's a little bit warmer here.